on this serenade on Margo. Hey friends, I'm Jimmy Gavis. Welcome to Nostalgic and another edition of Top 5 Motu Moments, where we immerse ourselves in an original episode of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe to uncover the five best moments we likely overlooked as kids. Up next, The Curse of the Spellstone. First, I'll give you a quick soup to nuts summary of the episode. If you want to get right to the top five list, head to this time right here. That said, let's do this. Time warp, take us back to 1983. We pan to the Temple of the Fire People, its door opened by Skeletor's magic to reveal the Spellstone. Yeah, they'll be taking that. It better be worth all this trouble, Evelyn. At the palace, Man-at-Arms demos his weather-controlling satellite for the king. It works! But when darkness returns and lightning strikes, Man-at-Arms is quick to let Adam know this isn't his doing, and suspects it could only be the work of... The Spellstone. I thought it was only a legend. You're the only legend I see, big guy. Now go change into He-Man and track Skeletor down before my dad reclaims ownership of the living room TV, all right? At the temple, Skeletor lets us in on his evil plan. He wants to devastate Eternia with the storm that he created. Our house burned to the ground. While Evil Lynn, disguised as an old lady, aims to devastate Eternian's trust in the king. Their inventions have angered the elders of Eternia. As she builds support among the common folk, she says the only way to appease angry elders is to punish those responsible. Turns out this guy just so happens to know where an ancient, fast-growing, and deadly fungus is hidden and is persuaded to fetch it for the old lady who confronts the royal family. You have brought this curse upon us! Teela recognizes that voice and spoils her disguise, but not before Eva Lynn releases the creeping Horak on the palace. It grows and spreads, overtaking everything in its path. Meanwhile, He-Man picks up this motley crew in the attack track and rolls out to find the Spellstone. Skeletor and his cronies greet our heroes and fists start flying. But wait, everyone chill! Skeletor wants to show He-Man what's going on at the palace. A dastardly distraction as our heroes just so happen to be standing on a trap door. Skeletor then turns on the faucet and our heroes race to find a way out. Reaching a dead end, He-Man diverts the rushing water before an opening mysteriously reveals itself. Finally, someone on our side. Rising to see who's come to help, uh, that may not be the case. Oh. Or maybe not. It's the Fire People, a fierce tribe that doesn't like strangers, especially ones who they believe stole their spellstone. He-Man tries to explain. He says, hey, we're on your side. Helios, king of the Fire People, isn't buying it and orders his men to seize them. A monster enters the mix and snatches Helios. A save by He-Man proves his good intentions and the Fire People allow them safe passage. Go in peace. Back at the palace, the creeping Horak has managed to move through every obstacle and weapon in its path, chasing the good guys to one last safe haven, a room man-at-arms fitted with a hydraulic door that can withstand anything. Well, almost. Outside, He-Man arrives just in time. Stripped of his weapon, Skeletor orders Evelyn to counter with the Spellstone. Feeling bad for being duped earlier, the Eternians lend a hand and snatch it from her grip. And wouldn't you know it, Skeletor reveals the only way to stop the Horak is with the Spellstone. So, just to be a jerk, he commands it to return to the region of flame. As the tension builds in the palace, He-Man sprints to catch up to it and hurls it just in time. The creeping Horak, it's gone! And so is Boneface. Until next time, He-Man. So what were my top five moments from this episode? Let's get to that list. Number five. Storm works its evil. Where is Skeletor's backstrap? About five minutes in, we see Boneface and Evelyn conversing around the Spellstone. Skeletor's back is bare, missing the two straps that typically help hold his chest armor in place. More on him in a moment. Number four. A scene so nice, we need to show it twice. The reveal of the fire people, and the fire people in general, is probably my favorite part of the episode. The way they flicker like fire and are semi-transparent, job well done by the animators. Especially the fire cat and that dragon, which seems highly appropriate. That one nearly singed my tail feather. Number three. Faster, it's gaining on us! 
I can't say for sure, but the Creeping Horak had to be inspired by 1958's The Blob, right? But it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a mass that keeps getting bigger and bigger. Just like the Creeping Horak, which according to Man at Arms is an aggressively fast growing fungus that used to be a form of execution in Eternia's darker times. Criminals would be locked in their homes, the Horak would grow over it until all the air was squeezed out. Tough way to go. The Blob, in case you forgot, is an alien that arrived by way of a small meteorite that fell to Earth. It slowly consumes living things, humans included, and grows larger as it does. You can't kill it, but you can stop it by freezing it. If only these folks had a spellstone of their own. Number two. You haven't won, He-Man. What is this attachment on Trapjaw's right arm? It's not the hook, which we see earlier in the episode, it's not the laser gun, and it's not the pincers, all of which came with the original figure. What we've got here is the only appearance in the animated series of the saw blade. Unfortunately, we don't get to see Trapjaw use it in battle. He just kind of stands there with it. Wasted opportunity, if you ask me. Number one. Time out, is Skeletor using a power sword? That's a rhetorical question. We can clearly see that that's the case. According to the complete guide to the classic animated adventures by James Etock, this is the only time in the series that we see Skeletor wield a sword similar to He-Man's, as opposed to his signature Havoc Staff or even the magical axe that made an appearance in the Diamond Ray of Disappearance. I know some of you might be wondering, doesn't Skeletor have his own power sword? You know, the purple one that came with the figure. You would be correct, but in short, that sword, which was technically half a sword, played a role in the pre-cartoon Masters of the Universe storyline, which started in 1982. We see it in the mini-comics that came with the figures, and Panthor's box art, for example. But when the animated series arrived in 1983, the purple sword was scrapped. The only power sword was He-Man's. For the sake of time, I'll leave it at that, but if you want to know more, let me know in the comments and I'll explain in more detail. And those are my top five moments from the Curse of the Spellstone. What did you think of this episode? Do you recall seeing Skeletor use that power sword and think to yourself, what's going on here? Let me know in the comments and thunder punch that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for future episodes. Or you can click right here, right now for the playlist to catch up on episodes you might have missed. I'm Jimmy Gaddis, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.